Hey guys, welcome back to another vlog. So I am currently sitting in my car right now. I just took a shower and I'm about to run to the store. I have to get a few things. I made like a little list. I'm just gonna run to like Family Dollar to do it. Cause I just need like toilet bowl cleaner, um, Windex, pop, things like that. Nothing really exciting. And I'm also going to look for a journal because my therapist always told me it's better to write down your feelings rather than take them out on other people because that's what I tend to do. I struggle with like attacking people that are like really close to me and then I end up pushing people away. So I'm going to try to look for a journal so I can start journaling my feelings again. That's like the one thing that has always helped me and I haven't done it for years. I have like a, an old journal from high school that I was reading and I let out so many emotions so I feel like I really want to do that again. So I'm going to look for like a little journal I can just start writing in whenever I'm sad or angry. I can just take out I can just like pound that journal instead of taking it out on people who are close to me. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just gonna run to the store now and then my town is doing like a celebration type thing that they do every summer where they have like a car show, they have bands, drinks, things like that. So I might check out the car show later. The weather is kind of shitty. It's been like raining on and off. I might check out the car show as long as the weather stays good, but I need coffee. I need to go to the store. I need to get some stuff done. It's like the first week back to reality after carnival it literally takes me so many days to get back into the swing of things after carnival because at carnival like nothing matters like you just have a blast and then when you come back home you're like oh bills work like shopping it's just ugh. so yeah i'm just trying to get back in the swing of things and i am on my way to my work right now to grab a coffee and then i'm gonna hit up the store so i figured i would just vlog and bring you guys with me do a little bit of a haul when i go to the store things like that um i started this vlog uh with a couple short clips when we went to grand haven uh we took my dad to grand haven just to like get him out of the house and get him walking around a little bit my dad absolutely loves grand haven and we were only there for two hours because he got very very tired so we weren't there that, that long but yeah we walked on the pier a little bit saw the water it was really nice so i just figured i would add that into another vlog and also i got another pr package from covergirl that we can unbox together so yeah hopefully this vlog is exciting i just figured in what the hell i will bring you guys with me so let's do this i'm just so freaking tired i just don't ever want to do anything but i figured i'd just get up get stuff done that way i can have the rest of the day to do whatever so Let's go, shall we? We shall. So something really exciting that happened is on my way to Carnival, I took my car and I drove all the way there all by myself. Mm -hmm. My very first hour and a half drive all by myself all the way to Stanton, Michigan. So that was really cool. I felt really accomplished. So that was like super exciting. They have like half of their streets shut down, so I have to take like all these weird fucking detours to the store. It's really weird, but you know, whatever. Longer drive, it'll be great. And I'm just passing the park now, and it looks like the car show is going on currently, so that's kind of cool. I don't know where these people are going. Gotta let these people go. There's a ton of people around, so, and a ton of kids running in the street. Oh, oh my god, the car show looks so cool. Yeah, I definitely think I'm gonna go to that. Can I get a 16 ounce hot mint mocha? I know. Look at you on drive through. How do you like it? Eh? Yeah, it's drive through. Hi! How are you? The store was amazing as always. Oh good. I'm <laughs> glad. Yeah, I would felt so out of it yesterday. I don't know what it, I don't know if it's because like it's my first week back home. So I was like last night I was like, eh. I have, I'm having that morning, but I completely bleached the back of the yeah. house again. Good. The floors look amazing. 
I went on a rampage bleaching floors and yeah. I rearranged boxes and good. Excited. Yeah. Can you say bye to Bree? We gotta go back and do something even if it's wrong. Bye. bye. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Bree. Jordan. Two fifty-three. Okay. Thank you. I'll grab that. My purse is like Narnia. I know, I gotta change mine out. <laughs> there you go. Thank you. Did you get busy last night at all? Um, we were steady, like we were in the 20s and 30s all night, but oh, okay. I mean, we still got everything done, so. Sweet. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's been steady, but not busy. Okay. So, well, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> Have a good uh, rest of your day. Babe. Yeah, thanks. Bye, guys. Beautiful wedding, what a beautiful wedding, says a bridesmaid to oh, what a shame, what a shame the poor groom's fly is on for. I tried in with the heaven you people ever heard of, closing the goddamn door, no, it's much better to face those kinds of things, with a sense of voice and rationality, I tried in. Just got to Family Dollar, I'm gonna go in, grab the shit I need, and I'll be right back. I am back home. I got two bags worth of stuff. Puppies are playing. <laughs> uh, if you're wondering why this is in my kitchen, because I keep them in my kitchen whenever I go somewhere because she can't be trusted to be let loose yet. So they just kind of hang out in here and they have their little bed with toys and stuff. So they literally do this the whole time I'm gone. So yeah, that's why. Um, okay, so some of the stuff I got is I got some more, is I got some more dish soap. I can never say that, dish soap. So I got the palm olive extra strength. Um, I really like this stuff. My mom used to use this back in the day and it's just kind of like stuck with me. So I got some more of that. I got some toilet bowl cleaner, just the Lysol, you know, stuff like that. Because where I live, we have very hard water here. So my toilet gets stained with like hard water stains so I have to clean my toilet quite often so I got a two pack of that. I also picked up some more Windex, just some window and glass cleaner. I really needed just like mostly cleaning supplies and I also got some more Swiffer wet jet mops because I ran out of them. Uh, I do have hardwood floors as you guys know so I use my Swiffer wet jet, bleh, Swiffer wet jet <laughs> quite often so I just got a pack of 15. I also got some Mountain Dew because I haven't, I have not purchased pop in probably two, three weeks so I figured I could just spoil myself a little bit and get some pop. I also got some more paper towel because I do clean quite often so I needed that for like all my Windex and stuff and I found a journal. I also got some more pencil lead for writing because I love writing with pencils. I can't stand writing with pens, so I always use mechanical pencils. And then this is the journal I found. It's kind of like a faux leather material and it has like this little clasp and you just open it up and it has all these pages that I can write in. So I thought this would be absolutely perfect. That's everything I got from the store, really nothing too exciting. Um, I needed a few other things, but I couldn't find them there. So I'm gonna have to make like a trip to Walmart soon eventually. And then here is the CoverGirl PR package that we got this month. It just says CoverGirl, I am what I make up and it says open by July 29th. So we can go ahead and unbox box this on camera so I can show you guys everything that is in here. It looks like there's going to be a ton of lip products so I'm very anxious to see. Sorry if you can hear that stupid ass lawnmower like I swear like I can never vlog and have everything go like just peacefully so you know whatever I need to get scissors. I just cut everything open and when we open it up Here's what it looks like on the inside. It just has like all different names of lipsticks and then it has this little sheet on the inside. As in honor of National Lipstick Day, the new CoverGirl Exhibitionist Lipstick Collection has 48 shades to clap back any shade you have ever been thrown for lipstick choices. Available in cream, metallic, demi matte finishes. This collection will have you rethink your comfort zone. Shimmery blue before noon, we've got you covered with deeper. Hot pink for the gym, try just saying. The highly pigmented formula is infused with shea butter for long lasting color and designed to break all the rules. Plus, the new CoverGirl Exhibitionist lip liners are perfect, are the perfect partner in crime to keep it a 
keep it exactly where you want it. Ooh, I'm excited for the lip liners. Can't wait to see what kind of lip looks you serve. Please tag CoverGirl Made so we can see what you create. Kisses, CoverGirl. So that's pretty cool. And then on the inside, we just have, oh my gosh. <laughs> okay, so we have this little foam piece and this is everything inside. Oh my gosh, look at all of these lippies. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. And like the lip liners on the outside. I like it because on the bottom, it tells you everything that they are. So we have cream, um, metallic, then we have the demi matte, more creams up here. I am so excited. We have a ton, a ton of lipsticks here. What the packaging looks like of all of them. Very sleek, very simple, very to the point. Pretty good size. And then the metallic ones have like a metallic looking packaging to them. And then here are what the lip liners look like. So again, really sleek, simple, to the point. Looks like they're also a really good size. Hello guys, welcome back. I know it's been another couple days since I vlogged, but today is Monday, July 23rd. And I am having... Again, another filming day. I filmed a chit chat, get ready with me using the Thirsty palette. Here's kind of like a preview of how it turned out. I'm honestly, I don't know. I'm not that impressed with this palette for some reason. Like, I feel like when I see pictures of it, like on Instagram and things like that, th their colors look really vibrant and really intense. And then when I used it, I don't know. I feel like they just don't look as intense. So I don't know if people are just uploading like super edited pictures of themselves or I just don't know how to work with the eyeshadows myself. I don't really know, but yeah, so it was kind of a fail, but I filmed that. I filmed my DNA test results. I filmed nose piercing pet peeves and I'm about to film a story time video. And then I think that's gonna be it for the day. I started filming at about 10.30 this morning and it is almost two o'clock right now. So I've been going at this for about four hours now and I'm starting to get a little bit hungry. And also my dad isn't really feeling that well today. So I kind of want to wrap up my filming day rather quickly so I can go um, check on him, see if he needs anything. I didn't end up vlogging the car show or anything downtown because we got poured on. Like it was soaking wet. It was raining like crazy, but I was able to go to a couple booths and I actually got a crystal and this is the one that I picked out it just looks like this it's just like this really pretty like turquoise looking one and I just put it on a chain that I had sorry about that scar there just kind of ignore that but yeah it's a really really cute crystal I really like these um Shane actually got me into crystals like, when we first started dating he was always wearing one and then I started wearing them so yeah ever since then I've just been really kind of into them I think they look really really cute so yeah I picked that up I also picked up a Chevelle CD and a movie. I found the movie Memento with Guy Pierce, which he is dreamy as all hell. So I picked that movie up and in the Chevelle CD. So yeah, I just got a couple things and then I went to the bar for a few drinks and then I worked yesterday and I had today off. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to sit down. I'm going to film. I'm going to get some stuff done. That's everything that's going on with me right now. I think I'm going to quickly feed the dogs, take them out, film one more video and then get myself something to eat because literally all I have in my stomach right now is coffee. Um, I woke up, brushed my teeth, washed my face, went and got my coffee, came right back inside and sat down and I have not left this stool in four hours, okay? Like I'm starting to get a little stir crazy in this room here, but hopefully the videos are good. Hopefully you guys like what you are seeing. Um, I'm trying to keep, keep upbeat, but when my sister messaged me this morning and said that my dad wasn't feeling well, uh, that kind of brought me down a little bit. So I'm just trying to keep my energy, you know, up and pumped a little bit. So um, hopefully I don't seem too, too down. But I'm gonna get back to filming really quick and I will talk to you guys in a little bit. Some of Andy's most dramatic shark encounters have taken place while documenting this world famous hotspot. And it's a magnet for shark research. But no sharks means no science. Finished filming for the day. It is currently 4 o'clock. I just had some lunch and now I'm watching Shark Week. This one looks like it's focused on the research of great white sharks, which is awesome. So just kind of chilling, watching some sharks. Fuck yeah. 
vessel on the electrical lines. Hello, it is Thursday, July 26th. It is about quarter to five at night right now. And again, it's been, let's see, I think I talked to you guys on Monday. So it's been a few days and in the last few days, my life completely changed and so did someone very close to me. So the last time I talked to you guys, um, I told you me and my dad went to like a downtown celebration thing. And I showed you this necklace and like it was fun and fun. Um, that night my dad started to have really severe abdominal pain and I've never told anybody really yet, but I feel like we've told everyone in the family. So I feel like I can give you guys a little bit of an insight. My dad was diagnosed with colorectal cancer on May 8th. So about two, two, three months ago, something I don't, I can't like process math right now. So, um, we kind of, I kind of deep down knew it was going to be the C word and unfortunately that's what it turned out to be. So my dad had about a four inch tumor in the upper part of his colon and we don't know how long it's been there. We don't know if, we, if, it's, if it's been there for six months or 15 years, like we don't know. So that's what the diagnosis was and because of my dad's age, he respectfully decided to decline chemo, radiation, surgery, um, all that stuff, which I understand, like he's in his late 70s, he's lived his life and he was totally content with, because why make someone so sick from chemo at that age? Or why put someone through that intense of a surgery at that age and ruin their quality of life with whatever time they have left, you know what I'm saying? So he made that decision and we all supported him on that. They didn't give us a stage. They didn't give us a timeline. We didn't know if it had spread or not. So basically we were just going to play it out. Take each day as it comes. And we knew what would eventually happen because obviously it is cancer. It is in the colon. And the surgeon basically said, if you do nothing about this, you will eventually and unfortunately get an obstruction, a bowel obstruction. You wouldn't be able to poop. You wouldn't be able to pass gas, things like that. So we knew that would happen. We didn't realize it was going to happen this quick. So Saturday night, my dad started having abdominal pain, very not feeling very well. So you know, we thought, okay, maybe he's just a little backed up. Like, let's not, let's not make this more dramatic than it has to be. So, you know, we gave him some Miralax to see if that would work. Nothing happened. The pain didn't get worse, just nothing happened. And so Sunday went by. Um, basically, he ended up sleeping all day. Like, he didn't, he didn't want to do anything. So um, he slept all day Sunday and all day Monday. And then finally, Tuesday night rolls around, and it was about quarter to 10 at night. Um, he requested to go to the store, like he had to go get milk. I don't know why, that was just his request. I walk outside, and my dad walks outside, and I see what he looks like. He's hunched over, he's holding right here on his stomach, and he is very confused he's very delirious he thought it was quarter to 10 in the morning he didn't understand why it was so dark out he also thought it was snowing outside and that's when i was like okay this is enough i called my mom and we all came here and we took him right to the emergency room and when we got to the emergency room you know they gave him some fluids to kind of rehydrate him and they started taking blood and when they came back to the room um, my dad had a white blood cell count of 32,000 and I believe my sister told me it's supposed to be between 10 and 14 so it was very high which means my dad was septic. Um, if you don't know what that is basically it is an infection in his blood so my dad was very very sick so they admitted him that night and he's been in the hospital ever since. They took some x-rays and things like that and it turns out that the cancer 
had ripped through his intestine and his entire stomach was filling up with feces. That's basically how the blood infection started. Um, but the bowel obstruction was in a totally different area than in the colon than the cancer was. So the cancer and the bowel obstruction weren't really related, um, which I mean, I don't know, take that as you want, good thing, bad thing, I don't really know. Just a lot of stuff going on. So they started um, IVs for antibiotics for the blood infection and he was admitted that night. We took him in at about 10 o'clock Tuesday night. Not gotten any sleep uh, since, tu it's Thursday. Since Tuesday night, I have only gotten maybe six hours of sleep. I'm very tired. I've been spending a lot of time in the hospital. My mom's been there like 24 seven because I still have to work and things like that but my mom has been there with him and they came back up and they said that we have two options we can go in and do surgery to take care of the ball obstruction and that would leave him with a he ended up getting a elastomy bag and a I can't mucosal fistula or something like that like a hole on the other side and I'll explain more in a second but they were like you can either have the surgery and change your whole way of life or you cannot have the surgery and we can make you comfortable for three days and that's it so my dad decided that he wanted to try so he went into surgery yesterday at around 3 30 4 o'clock uh, surgery went really well he has a pretty decent incision right here on his um, stomach abdomen whatever you want to call it and they were able to fix the obstruction and they were also able to get the growth, the tumor that the big one, the one that was growing out of his body. However, that required removing quite a big portion of his intestines, which is why he has to have the elostomy bag. And if the cancer had already spread to the other side of his body, that's what that mucosal fistula is. I think that's what it's called. That way there's already a hole there in case you know, so the poop can drain out and he can have a bag there in the future if need be. Um, while they were in there, they discovered that the cancer that started in his colon had unfortunately spread through his entire body and there is nothing they can do, obviously. It's in throughout his entire body. And they gave us a timeline. I'm not going to say it because I don't want to cry. I've already done my fair share of crying. And yeah, so today is day one out of surgery. I just got back maybe a little bit ago from seeing him. And he kept like dozing off, obviously, from the medications and the anesthesia still in his system. He still seems a little confused. Uh, he kept asking what all the cords were because he has so many IVs. And he also has an NG tube um, because they have to drain his stomach of all the feces. So basically he has a tube going up into his nose, down his throat, all the way into his tummy. And it basically suctions everything out. Um, so he still has that. That was absolutely god awful to witness. I. I couldn't, I had to leave the room when they were doing it because it's just, if you've ever seen someone or if you've ever personally gotten an NG tube, it's not pleasant, it's not comfortable, and I could not see my dad like that, so I had to leave the room when they were putting that in. Uh, so he has one of those. Um, very confused about all the tubes. He kept asking what his bracelets were for, and then he would just kind of doze off again. But they were able to get him to walk today, so he was able to walk um, on his own, which is good. And I think tomorrow they're going to start him on water and soft foods. But that's basically what I've been dealing with. And I wish I could sleep there all week. But unfortunately, when things like this happen, life does not stop. Work does not stop. Bills do not stop. So I was supposed to work today. I obviously didn't because my dad was in surgery and then out of surgery so I was able to get myself covered today but I am going to be working the rest of the week and the weekend so I just gotta I just gotta talk through I was not 
I was not feeling very good last night after receiving the news that I received. And what's weird about it is I deep down knew it wasn't going to be good news. But actually like hearing it, I think kind of like affected me on a whole other level. But I'm feeling a little better today because he seemed... He seemed like himself aside from a little bit of confusion and he was able to walk so that makes me feel a little bit better. But I don't think he realizes how different his life is going to be, like the quality of it because obviously when you have a colostomy bag or elostomy bag is what he has, I don't think he realizes all the maintenance that's going to come with that when and if he does come home. We don't know how long he'll be in the hospital but yeah, um, that's what's been going on. That's what I've been dealing with. And it's, it's unfortunate, but at the same time, deep down, I knew this was coming. I just think it was a little bit of a shock that it happened this fast. And it is very aggressive cancer because when they first found it, it was two inches. A month later, it was four. And a couple months after that, it had ripped, to, ripped through his intestine and in was releasing feces into his stomach and the cancer had spread throughout his entire body. So it is very aggressive. We don't know what's gonna happen next. Basically, we're just trying to get him through recovery from surgery and work on getting him supplies so he can come back home because I refuse to ever put my dad in a nursing home. I do not believe in them. I think they are horrible, disgusting places. People, they're just not taken care of there. I don't care if you work in one. I really don't give a fuck. I do not like nursing homes. I think they're terrible places and I will never be putting my dad in one. Whether that means I quit my job and move back downstairs with him, then so be it because I'm not putting him in a nursing home. But he really has to, before he's discharged from the hospital, he has to learn how to change his bag, clean his bag, um, things like that. So it's gonna be very different for my dad. He's always had a very laid back life, never really had to worry about anything. And now he has something very serious that he has to look over basically. So that will be the next obstacle and we're just gonna take it from there. We're gonna enjoy the time we have left with him and spend as much time with him as possible and just try to keep him happy and comfortable. So. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm a very strong person, I'd like to say, and I'm, I'm feeling okay right now. I have my moments. I've done my fair share of crying. I have not slept. I have not ate. I'm so tired, I feel high. <laughs> I don't know if any of you out there have ever had that, like when I get like super exhausted, I feel stoned almost, like everything's just kind of like, I don't know, so I'm, I'm extremely exhausted, but, I gotta keep, I gotta keep going with what I have going. Like, you can't just stop everything. Like, I'm still gonna be uploading for you guys because I'm not gonna just disappear. And also, YouTube is a job for me as well. So I'm gonna still continue to upload. I'm gonna go to work as much as I can. You just, you just gotta do it. So, uh, yeah, that's a little bit of an update for you guys. Uh, I don't really have anything else much to say, but I just thought it was a good idea for me to come on here and tell you guys, because it's time. Oh, in other news, um, I actually got a package that I wanted to unbox with you guys. So a friend of mine, who I've known for a very long time, she is a um, consultant for Rodan and Fields. I don't know if any of you have ever heard of them before. But basically, they're kind of like the number one skincare um, in the U.S. right now. And they just had their first Australian department open up not too long ago. And she told me she told me about all of her products. And one really caught my eye. So I decided to purchase one. I really wanted to unbox it on camera for you guys and tell you about it. Maybe show you how it works. Things like that. So I'm going to go get my tripod and some scissors. And we can unbox this puppy. And a little box about this big, not too big. And the product I got is something that is more beauty related, I guess you could say. And it's like, it's been the only product that's like really caught my eye because 
It's something that I've always been really curious about and something that I really wanted to try. It just comes with this little package slip right here. It just says, welcome. Thank you for becoming a Rodan and Fields preferred customer and embarking on your journey to great skin with us. So that's what it is. And I also have my receipt and inside is the product. So the product that I got is the Lash Boost. This is the Rodan and Fields Enhancements Lash Boost. Basically what Lash Boost is, is it's very similar to Revita Lash. Um, that's the only thing I really can compare it to because that's the only one I really know about. Terrible to that, basically it is a lash serum that you put on your lash line on top every single night and then in a couple months you get to see longer fuller thicker lashes i have seen many many people use this and the results have just blown me away so i really want to see what it will personally do for my lashes my lashes i mean obviously i have sorry about my eyeliner my makeup's been on for like freaking ever uh these are my eyelashes right now with mascara so i'm very curious to see like when i take my makeup off and take before pictures and see just see what it's going to look like after this stuff so you open up this little tubey and here is what it looks like on the inside this is about a two month supply because you just need very very little on the top lash line and it just has kind of like a little brush so as you can see that's what the brush looks like and then it just goes on your upper lash line uh, before you go to sleep at night and that's really it that's all you have to do once a day and then I'm pretty sure these must be the directions I mean she saw results within about three weeks which makes sense because you're not going to see results after the first time like it's a serum you got to give it time to you know do its thing but I'm really really excited to use this I just wanted to share this with you guys because I'm like I'm so excited really heavy product like good quality but I think I'm going to keep it in this little thing because that way I'll be able to see it easier in my bathroom because that's the thing with me when it comes to skincare like I will start something and then kind of forget about it over time especially if I put it like in a cupboard or in something so if I have this out and I can physically see it I'll remember to do it so I will have to show you guys the results after about a month or so and see how they look so yeah I'm really excited about it um, some lunch because I haven't really been eating. I have basically been drinking Mountain Dew and a ton of coffee with a lot of extra shots. So I think right now I really want to take a nap, but it's too late because I have to be to work in 12 hours. So I think I'm just going to start editing and getting some videos up for you guys. And after work tomorrow, I will be back up at the hospital with my dad. So yeah, that's the plan but I just wanted to come back and update you guys and all that good stuff. So that's it for now. And I will see you guys very soon in the next clip. Bye. Hey guys. So today is Friday, July 27th. And I was editing this vlog and I realized that it was like really super long. So I just wanted to come on here really quick and end it. Um, I'm gonna make this really short. I'm I'm very tired I went to work today um, I was actually late for work today I was supposed to clock in at 5 o'clock this morning and I didn't hear my alarm until 4.54 this morning so I was like 20 minutes late for work but I have no other excuse other than I've just been so tired so tired but I got to work I worked um, right after work, I went up to the hospital to see my dad, and I just got home and showered, which is why my hair is like a mess, because I haven't even brushed it yet, and excuse my eyes, they're very swollen. Um, just a lot of tears, you know, lack of sleep. So, yeah, I think I'm going to make some rice and have some water and go to sleep, because I work again tomorrow, and then... I have something with my landlord tomorrow afternoon, so I don't know if I'll be able to make it up to the hospital tomorrow. I'm going to try like hell, but, you know, we'll just see how it goes. So, sorry for the way this vlog ended. I know, 
I know I, I didn't expect it to end this way at all, but uh, regardless, I hope you guys enjoyed all the good parts of this vlog and I guess a really good thing about this whole vlogging experience. I'm sorry the lighting is so yellow. My lamp is right there. I guess the whole positive thing about vlogging is that it's very real. It's very raw, real life stuff. So, yeah. That's how it is. Welcome to my vlogs, <laughs> where my life never goes right and there's something always going wrong, but that's okay. Um, just gonna take it one day at a time, but I love you guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, you know the usual, give a huge thumbs up. Don't forget to go down and subscribe. And I will see you very soon in my next video. I love you guys. Bye.